Hey everyone, thank you for uh, joining my channel. So let's talk about PowerShell Playground and Jupyter Notebook. So if you don't know, I, uh, I built a repo called uh, PowerShell Playground. It, it's just a combination of Jupyter Notebooks um, that is in, uh, written in PowerShell. And I've just been uh, written a lot of modules to make things easier for you to kind of navigate the API and uh, you know do some form of automation within uh, Microsoft and Azure and Defender and you know various components. I imagine that um, hopefully people will want to contribute their own notebooks and we can kind of have sort of a repository of all these notebooks that does all these things and we don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? Um, you're welcome to take whatever you want from this, uh, take the snippets and you know, embed it into your scripts. Uh, the premise is um, we want to kind of navigate uh, the notebook and kind of have uh, reusable uh, notebooks to you know, help you do your tasks more efficiently. So um, a couple of things um, when you access the notebook that you want to pay attention to is I did build some custom modules. PP core is just, you know, core modules that I'm going to be using a lot to import and also use to encrypt and decrypt the uh, credential. So if you don't want to store your text as clear text in the notebook, you can leverage this, uh, some of these functions and it's going to require a master password. We're going to salt that master password. It's going to be that key that we use to encrypt and decrypt the, uh, you know, the credentials. And uh, if you kind of want to know what that looks like, uh, it's going to be in the uh, credential folder in um, the user folder uh, under dot credentials. And as you can see, the client ID has a hash and encrypted, right? So yeah, pretty straightforward. So we want to, uh, that way we don't have to store the credentials um, uh, as clear text, right? You do know, have to, you do have to know your master password to kind of, you know, grab those credentials. All right, so um, if you go under Microsoft and you go under security, Microsoft Defender ATP, I'm gonna go over uh, some modules that I've kind of uh, added to help you query uh, various APIs within Microsoft using Jupyter Notebook. So uh, if you wanna add or, rem or remove a machine to a de device group based off machine tag, um, the main purpose of this is in Microsoft Defender ATP, if you have sort of different groupings um, and you want to associate them, you can do it dynamically based off a of machine tag or you know, other parameters. I'm just doing machine tags as an example. And then once you basically um, put that machine in that certain tag, then it will be part of that device group. Okay. So Again, as you can see, the credentials aren't really uh, there. You, um, and I've replaced it with X's. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna skip that, and I'm gonna import my credentials from that local file. Um, let's see, the credential array. Okay, it looks like I ran this already. So let me just put something below. I put B to put something below, and I will do credentials equals null. I'm gonna fix this so that it doesn't happen like this. But the premise was I, I have invalid credentials and it's trying to load it and it's invalid, so. All right. Now that I loaded the credentials, um, it's in my, um, it's in memory for this notebook. I'm going to authenticate with the graph API. Now, things you gotta remember when you authenticate with the graph API, um, you need to have proper authentication and proper access. When you authenticate, there's many different ways. You can do client credentials, and I believe you can do device code. I, um, I do have a device code um, as well. So if you just replace this with device code, uh, it should authenticate with a device code, okay? So what that looks like is you hold shift, you press enter, and we get an access code. Simple as that. Now that we have an access code, we want to authenticate. Uh, we already authenticated, um, and you got to make sure you go and check your application permission. Um, but once you get your application permission, we want to then uh, build that header, right, to pass that API call to grab that list of machines, right? It's going to be a get, and we're going to get a machines. 
And as you can see, here's my list of machines. It's on group one, group one, group two, right? Whatever. But let's go ahead and add that machine. Let's do another machine just so you know it works. We're going to replace this machine ID and we're going to add it to group one. Okay, and let's add it. So we ran that command. Let's verify. As you can see, it's in group one. Simple as that. So if you ever wanted to do something with, within this workflow to add a machine, that is available for you. Or you can just go, you know, directly to the uh, GUI. The premise of this is you can take these snippets and then embed it into some script that you have uh, that you're building out. Okay. Let's see. Um, if you want to query the Graph AP, I'm sorry, the Microsoft Defender ATP Advanced Hunting Qu Query, um, you can query different components within uh, the Graph API. So an example would be, let's say you just want to get a list of your machines, right? So you would call upon this device info variable, oh, I'm sorry, table, and it's going to give you that result. So within here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go, I'm going to have to import my credentials for this notebook. It's, uh, they don't share the same parameters. So then I want to authenticate with the API. And once I authenticate with the uh, API, we then want to pull that raw query from GitHub. Okay. And that is because there's a GitHub repository that you can use to actually uh, reference. So if you ever go to GitHub and type in Microsoft uh, or, or MDAP uh, advanced hunting query, mm -mm -mm. actually don't click on, don't click on the one I just did, click on the GitHub one there's a ton of people contributing to this repo of their own queries and you can access it and then just see how they build a certain query right so you don't have to kind of spend a lot of time figuring out how to build a query you can kind of modify an existing one or just learn about you know how they built that query so device info right this particular query we're gonna you know that the reason i'm running this is because i can kind of pull a particular query i want and then uh, I can kind of copy paste and use that, but I'll just do device info just to get a list of devices. Let me actually just put this all on one cell. Actually, no. All right. And then we just run the query. So the query is gonna give you a result, um, right? As you can see, it, there's a result field. And then we're gonna parse those results. And then from those results, you could do whatever you want with it, right? Simple as that. So you can turn it into a report, do whatever, but now you have sort of the underlying code uh, to do what you need to do. The hardest part is gonna be authenticating with the Graph API. So hopefully that module will work for you. Um, you're welcome to copy that module and use it for your own uh, scripts. Again, that module is gonna be located in the custom module folder. Uh, another thing that I built out, let's see here, close some of these. Oh no, what's going on? All right, let's see. Um, let's go to Azure Sentinel. So Azure Sentinel, if you want to add a rule, um, there is a module that was built by uh, Wartel. And so I kind of provide a links on the notebook, but you import that module and then you can add some Sentinel roles. So you can kind of have to follow this template, you add this rule and you can kind of add a role via PowerShell. So you can incorporate this into whatever kind of workflow. Um, that you have 
for if you want to query Azure Sentinel via REST API, you um, can do that as well. An extra parameter that you will need is the Sentinel workspace ID, okay? Because that will be the workspace that um, the log analytics workspace that we need to reference in the API call. So again, I'm going to authenticate, uh, grab my token, um, right? And just to show you the other flow, let me see if that will work. So we want to reference the vice code, and we'll do it that we'll do it this way. So I have a sort of a loop waiting for the code. You want to copy this. You click on this link, and this is just another way of authenticating with uh, the API. So once you authenticate, you get a token, and then you you just move on forward. Um, this particular cell I'm looking for is just for security alerts. And here it is. I'm only selecting the first row so I don't get flooded, but you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of rows. So, but yeah, you take this and then uh, you do whatever you want with this query, right? Uh, turn it to a chart, whatever. Let's see. So that's another thing. Um, I I probably will be building out some scenarios of just kind of a whole investigation workflow, but uh, you know, stay tuned for that. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, MCAS. So for MCAS, uh, if you want to get an activity, you do have to import the PowerShell uh, MCAS module. And then from there, um, you configure variables, you import the credentials, and then you query the API. Um, I don't know if this will work, so don't. I'm going to fix it, but just an FYI. I think I was still working on this one. Let's see, what else? If you do want to query the API, another one um, I believe was, I'm working on is entitlement packages. So you just want to get entitlement packages. If you don't know, it's kind of a setting up packages that um, have access to certain resources. And then you kind of invite sort of, when you whenever you try to, uh, whenever you work with uh, outside, partners or contractors and you want to ha have a b2b relationship you can use their uh, they can use their azure id you don't have to make them a new user and then you just share them an access package and then the access package will grant them access to certain uh, sites or repositories so um, very very helpful um, it's a new it's it's a rather new feature so something to definitely look into so you want to set your variables you want to import your credentials, right? Uh, you want to authenticate with the API. Oh, I'm doing device code. Let me just get that code real quick. This is kind of like that flow of, you know, when you go on YouTube or whatever, Netflix, you kind of have to put a code in, right? It's, 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 it's a similar process. So again, we want to query, uh, get our access packages, and there we go. So a lot of methods we can put where we can add in access packages, add users to the access packages, right? So pretty cool capability there. All right. Mm, I think that's it. Uh, also, if you ever, um, you know, look at the quick reference, I have a some examples you can kind of look at, um, hash tables, things like that, um, plan of building some tutorials. And yeah, let me know if there's any problems. Um, again, if you uh, go to GitHub, you can launch that MyBinder. And if you don't know how to spin up Docker, right, and build a, and just, you know, you're going to have to build that image and then run it. If you don't want to do it that way, you can just click on this launch my binder. It's going to be a little slower, so give it a like. I don't know how long it takes because it, it'll uh, it'll kill the instance, and it might even delete the file if it, no one really logs in. So it might take like 10 minutes, but once it builds out, it'll just be the similar environment here. Um, I think that's it. So yeah, let me know if you want any kind of notebooks built out. I'll be more than happy to build them out for you. Um, I again, I uh, be sure to just check for updates because I'm going to be adding a lot of. Um, things I build out for uh, customers into this. Um, I'm also, uh, I added the Shodan vulnerability assessment too, too as well. So 
you know, put your Shodan API and then you can kind of query Shodan, um, you know, and see if there's any possible holes in your security posture and things like that. Um, also thinking about doing some Ubiquity and uh, my PFSense firewall and just any some notebooks at that around that to just manage my local, you know, my local network at home. All right. So thank you everyone for um, watching this video. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you want to uh, support me. Thank you everyone and have a good day.